Welcome to another episode of The Vegan Pulse. I am your host, Nancy Arenas. Today, my guest is Robert Davis. For more than 35 years, Robert has been at the forefront of evolutionary free enterprise. In 1979, he developed the first tofu hot dog, Lightlings. And in 2016, he developed the next generation of plant-based hot dogs called the Alpha Dog. A serial entrepreneur with a passion for natural foods, he has created and grown an array of natural food companies. Stick around. I want to introduce them to you. Hi, Robert. How are you? Well, I'm just doing wonderfully. And you? How are you? I am doing great, especially because I get to talk to you today. Well, Coming all the way from Taos, New Mexico. <laughs> it is, you know, and everybody has to be somewhere. As they say. <laughs> Yes. Well, thank you for joining us on The Vegan Pulse. Yes. I would like to begin with asking you about your journey into veganism. Well, it's, you know, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of background uh, in the process, but it was one of, of, a, of a, a conditional contextual phenomenon. I moved in, in my graduate school into a, a vegetarian household, made it very easy very easy to move from, you know, because I was away from a family that had eaten a certain pattern or my immediate friends that I grew up with that perchance weren't vegetarian. So it's a lot harder to change in situations when our environment doesn't support us. So I was very fortunate and, um, you know, learned about tofu and everything. Uh, the Smile Herb Company, I think in Hyattsville, Maryland. I live close to that location. And anyway, I was introduced to baking bread uh, and so many wonderful little, little treats and uh, ended up going to graduate school on the topic of planetary development and came out of there and started a tofu company called Light Foods. Um, I love tofu. I believe, as a lot of the people in the tofu movement years ago, friends of Bill Shirtliff, who wrote the book of tofu, the book of miso, the book of tempeh, he really westernized soy foods. He brought um, excellent information from Japan and introduced soy foods, organic soybean soy foods, uh, as a way to feed people. Because it was only up until that time, most soybeans were used for oil or feed. Human consumption was just kind of a, you know, something in Japan or China, or, you know, that uh, ate soybeans uh, in whatever form. Besides that, the, you know, the key thing in soybeans is the kind of the hierarchy of efficiencies of how good they are for you. Miso is absolutely superb. Miso is absolutely superb. Tempeh is right after the highest B12 source of any, any vegetarian food. And then miso in moderation, you know, in that regard. So I asked Bill Shirtliff about soy foods years ago because everybody was, it was bad, it was good, it was bad, it was good. And certainly genetically modified is not the way to go. So, uh, or highly processed as isolates. But, um, uh, but miso, tempeh, and, and tofu. So that, that kind of was my my understanding of vegetarianism and veganism. And that's how I got started and just uh, fell in love with the process of providing food that was transformational and that making tofu is transformational. And um, always in each piece of food, it was light foods. We visualize light going into all the products. So that's, um, it was an intention food company, an intention food company. Wow. And, and I think that one of the misinformation about um, tofu or um, soybeans yeah. is yeah. The estrogen, but it's phytoestrogen and not the estrogen that's bad for you. Is exactly. That, exactly. And, and people get confused. And then I guess the and then people who don't want the plant based, they kind of use that, you know, confusion. Yes. Uh, against us because they say, oh, it's this, but it's actually a different kind of estrogen that's in the organic soy food. Um, certainly, certainly. Organic soy. And, yeah. and so, moderation uh, is, is the key. We do not need as much protein as, 
as uh, we've been told. Uh, we've been told a lot of things. We've been told a lot of things. <laughs> we, we've been told a lot of things that are lies, a lot of things that are, you know, that are yeah. just to help somebody else line their pockets with money. We've been told lots of well, things. Shocking that humans are like that. The, the whole, the, the, we're doing new history and history at this point in time that really looks at, you know, where we came from, what, what our atrocities have been, and, you know, what's been done to try to remedy those. I like back in Greece, the uh, Delphi Oracle. Uh, so every, I think, 2,500 years or 250 years, it was 3,000 or 30,000 people uh, did the sacred ceremony. Of, of basically drinking uh, uh, this particular beverage, which was psychedelic. So they just had a transformative effect. And uh, the governance at that point said people were just, they're just happier in their lives that had this experience. So it's like, how does something like that happen uh, naturally for people? And I've always felt, you know, no wine before it's time. No wine before it's time, unfortunately. But we do need wine now. You see, that's the issue. We need a lot of wine now. And uh, a lot of it's not quite ready, you know. So <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens. It's, it'll be an exciting photo finish. It'll be an exciting photo finish. Uh, yeah. And um, now you came up with a tofu hot dog at Light Lives, and then you went on... It was, it was light, uh, light Foods. Light Foods. I'm um, sorry, I apologize. I about Light Life and Michael Cohen, who had tofu pups and then accidentally took my name and started Light Life Foods. Yeah. <laughs> I, know Michael, I know Michael Cohen, but it's a, it's a natural... Yeah, I mean, it's a light something. What I did was called Light Links. Light Links was the name of the hot dog. And we had Light Loney tofu bologna, and quite a few uh, other items, amazing things. And then you also had an alpha dog, right? That was later on uh, with, uh, with, uh, good, uh, with Alpha Foods that I, I co-founded uh, back in 2015, the alpha dog. It was very, very good, yeah. So these days, what are your projects? What are you working on? Well, I'm working on uh, uh, the development of, the, of, a, of a hemp company called Planet Based Foods that my son and his friends and myself started uh, three years ago. So we're in the midst of launching nationally over the next several months, a line of, of burgers, uh, primarily made with hemp, pea protein, and brown rice. Um, so we've got uh, three burgers, two sausages, and we'll soon have a line of hemp taquitos and a breakfast sandwich with a, a vegan egg alternative, uh, a vegan cheese, our sausage, which is tremendous, and um, a plant-based muffin. Oh, that's awesome. I can't wait. Yeah. So that's what we're, we're doing hemp because I started with soy as being a potential mana for the planet. I saw there's, a, there's so many hungry people. There's lots of soybeans. Let's kind of direct the flow of the production of food from where there's a lot of soy, take it from the cattle feed a little bit or reduce the oil. So, uh, but then finding out about hemp, because I was uh, years ago, R&D director for a living harvest, developed the first hemp ice cream, the first major hemp milk line. So uh, that really showed me a lot, plus the first hemp cheese back in 93, hemprella, hemprella. So I, I now see hemp as really the true month, the diverse plant that it is. It offers so much, as well as mushrooms. Mushrooms are, are the other, you know, uh, tremendous, tremendous uh, uh, gifting, gifting to humans. Uh, the hemp plant, yeah. Yeah, I went like that, raised our hands for the mushroom and the potato, because the mighty potato is also up there. <laughs> it is. It is. I love potatoes. Now, um, coming into this new year, 2022, and um, with all the transformation that's going on. Yes. And uh, the chance for, you know, uh, plant-based foods to even go further 
and perhaps to changing the world to a more vegan nation. Um, what are your thoughts about that? Well, uh, that's, uh, it's, a, it's a big question. It's a big, big, big question. And as anything, I believe it starts at the individual level. You know, as much information that can be transmitted is wonderful. It's the uptake of the information. And the, the, um, then the action steps uh, of someone that has uh, seen the light, so to speak, or seen whatever it is, it's going to benefit themselves and the greater good. So, um, you know, it really takes some degree of that understanding in one shade or another, as it would fit whatever person that was accessing that concept, because it's kind of an awakening to the sacredness of life and uh, the preciousness of life and uh, how we can as a culture and a planet survive against a transforming planet right now. We have to transform harmonically with the planet if we're going to survive. We cannot stay static in these areas when the earth is saying, we're gonna get through this, but you know, we have to do it this way, you know? So if that is beautifully put, you know, transform harmoniously with, you know, with, with what's going on, because so many climate change events that are happening, displacing people, hurting people, killing people. And, you know, I hear people say, oh, I feel so bad about that. And in my mind, my head is going, well, are you vegan? Are you are you making the changes necessary? If you're really that sorry and you really yeah. feel um, so um, devastated by this, then it's real easy. And like you said, it's, it's one person. You don't have to look any further than to start transforming every individual themselves into three times a day or however, however many times a day, uh, having peace on their plates instead of diseased and tortured souls. Well, exactly. That's, that, that's it. So it's a matter of how to present information. Um, it's a meeting, a meeting of souls and understanding. How do, you, how do you disseminate something so it's palatable for a lot of people that are not close to going there? So, you know, it's, it's a tricky situation because the truth is the truth at some level, you know, but it's unique to each person as to how they perceive that and how they respond. We have to hope collectively that we're becoming as a, as a species more receptive to, to uh, survivalist ideas. We're going to somehow get through this. So how can we adjust to this? And I think having programs on a local level by even supported by a government to really teach people how to live, you know, harmonious, harmoniously, so to speak, uh, not only diet, but lifestyle. Uh, it's, it's almost how are we going to get through this? Because we're we're, we don't have a lot of time, and there's a lot of energy seemingly that's at a counterpoint of trying to get through this peacefully. And, and I think we also have to let, uh, change the way we address things, our language, you know, um, the way we state things, and um, to be able to open our eyes to the lies that and confusion that some people put in front of us just to stop us from making the change that is needed because people yeah. don't like change as it is naturally. You're so right. when the confusion and the lies are mixed together, um, they just make it harder for people to That's do that transformation. You're absolutely right. And therein lies the challenge with the media and, uh, you know, every, every means of energy dissemination by the governance that, uh, you know, is about us. So, you know, let's, uh, again, it's a one person at a time phenomenon. And if we can be by example, however that is, with the full intention of our heart uh, in a daily basis, I think that will be seen and known. And it'll be a great tool for someone to reflect upon for their own peace of mind. And however they wear it, however they wear it for themselves, because it's not going to be mine, how I do it. It's going to be how they do it, but we'll meet 
will meet in that place of mutualism for our own survival. Perfect, perfect. And um, also, Robert, you uh, have an interview show yourself. You want to talk a little bit about that? Well, it's just called FrontierTheater.org. And uh, it's something that people will have to explore. I've interviewed people for, uh, I've got probably 70, 80 interviews, a lot of uh, luminaries in the field of alternative medicine, uh, uh, energy, um, meditation, uh, food systems. I, I interviewed John Robbins and uh, Francis Moore LePay. Um, and I almost did a documentary, Light Foods or a Natural Foods Journey to Light. And I was uh, almost got that funded to go back and uh, uh, look at the beginning of the natural foods movement, at least of the last hundred years, and interview various people that were involved, Michio Kushi, and you know, quite a few folks that have been involved in dynamic diets over the last X number of years. But uh, so I, I like to interview people, and there's a lot of people that are interesting on there that are unique thinkers. And uh, I just like always a good conversation. I do too. And that is yeah. why I do these uh, Vegan Pulse uh, podcasts. They're uh, just to introduce people to these interesting individuals such as yourself and others who are doing amazing things. Not only that, but talking about their journey into veganism so that... Um, other people know that this is something we're collectively trying to move forward for compassion and peace and harmony in the world, you know, for everyone, not just for you or for that person or for this person, but for all of us, because we're all in this together. And it's absolutely, you know, hear ye, hear ye. And, you know, may it, may it be, may it be, said in a way that reaches the ears of many um, and even more uh, the hearts of, of more, you know, that that's, that's really where it's going to come from because that, that has to be the understanding. And for someone to get from point A to point Z from this way of seeing the world in reality to the way that begets a diet that is harmonious with the earth and their bodies. So that's a, that's a road, that's an amazing distance for so many people. So I, I, it's, it's almost to me at times, it feels like it's gonna have to be magical. It's gonna have to be magical, uh, you know, to get, but, but people, so many are closer than they've ever been in just trying to be healthier. I think people are understanding with the toxicities that we're involved with. You know, you have to eat a clean diet. You have to do some things to take care of yourself. And that's that, that eating well and correctly for your body, you know, whether you're macrobiotic or Ayurvedic and your vata, kapha, pitta, you know, whatever your dietary pattern, you're doing it to keep yourself as enlivened and healthy as possible and have as minimal impact on the planet if, as, as possible as well. But that comes with a certain understanding. Yeah. And I truly believe that inherently there's good in everybody. And it's just that we've, some people have been taken off course because of society's lies and untruths and stories. Yeah. And if we could just uh, shine a light on their path back to their true self, which is compassion yeah. and love, that mm -hmm. I think that they get it, but it's just that making that uh, voyage, you know, yeah. being that lighthouse for the boat to come ashore that, sure. you know, that they see the light. Yes. Well, you know, that's, there's, uh, I've always liked transpersonal therapy. Um, they also believe in, you know, psychedelics um, and holotropic breath work. And Osho's dynamic meditation. Osho's dynamic meditation. It's a complete catharsis clearing system. It's, you know, uh, again, it's, it's opening up and uh, uh, kind of almost some degree disposing of a former self to invite in an entire new being. So, you know, it's kind of like a ceremony, I guess, like in the Waldorf school from 
kindergarten to first grade, you go across the rainbow bridge type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or like, you know, like a flower that is closed up and having the information of what you need so that you open up to your true self. That's, that's a beautiful, a beautiful image. Yeah, I'm, I'm always, you know, hip, 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 and hooraying, any and all, that, that you know, it's, it's fun, you know, such as talking with you and others that, that uh, want to be present and alive in your life. And, um, you know, that's really comes with a certain degree of knowing that hopefully, you know, is, is going to be part of someone understanding veganism or vegetarianism or whatever ism that they come up with that is, uh, again, uh, qualitative and healthful and uh, provides balance, you know, for their environment. You know, well, thank you, Robert. It's been a pleasure talking to you. My pleasure, my pleasure as well. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us on another episode of The Vegan Pulse. I am your host, Nancy Arenas. Remember to like us on Facebook, check out our website, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have a pulse, you have a purpose. Live vegan. <laughs>